Urolithiasis is one of the most common indications for urinary tract ultrasonography, whether you are dealing with a patient with flank pain, looking for source of obstruction in hydronephrosis, or following up on stone burden in your clinic patient. In this video, I'll talk about identification of stones um, on the ultrasound images, particularly using the Doppler mode. So how good is ultrasound for the detection of urinary tract calculi? A wide range of sensitivities and specificities um, have been reported for ultrasonography for detection of stones, which is likely secondary to variations in technique, body habitus, patient population, reference standards, and also it depends upon hydration status of the patient. Uh, moreover, imaging stones in the renal pelvis and in the ureter uh, present different challenges because it's difficult to image the length of an undilated ureter uh, from bowel gas interference and increased penetration depth. A pooled review of the literature demonstrates a sensitivity and specificity of 45% and 88% respectively for the detection of kidney stones and sensitivity and specificity of 45% and 94% respectively for detection of ureteral stones. And on top of that, sensitivity is reduced for stones less than 3 millimeters, and also stones can be missed in a decompressed uh, pelvic aliceal system uh, because it's, it becomes difficult to distinguish echogenic sinus fat from the stones. Beginners can easily confuse lumpy bumpy sinus fat with stones. So how do stones appear on grayscale ultrasound? On grayscale imaging, stones appear as hyperechoic or bright structures accompanied by acoustic shadowing. Acoustic shadowing is the anechoic or black band seen beyond echogenic structures that do not transmit ultrasound waves such as stone and bone or any calcified structure. It is similar to us forming a shadow when we are in the pathway of light. Here are some of the examples of stones in various organs. This is the transverse section of the gallbladder with the hyperechoic stone here and it's giving a black band of acoustic shadow and here is the example of stone in the kidney and this is the kidney here this is the upper pole this is the lower pole so you see a stone uh, somewhere in the lower pole of the kidney as a bright structure followed by a long hypoechoic to anechoic shadow and this is the example of a bladder stone where you can see a big horseshoe shaped uh, echogenic structure that is bladder stone uh, which is giving a shadow again. So essentially this animation shows that this structure or the stone is not transmitting any sound noise and reflecting pretty much most of the ultrasound beam you are hitting it with and casting a shadow behind that. And note that shadowing is not always present. Stones create shadow when they are large enough to block the ultrasound beam that you are hitting them with. But when a stone or calcification is smaller than the cross section of the ultrasound beam, like you are seeing here, this white thing is the stone, uh, which is smaller than the ultrasound beam width, then shadowing will not occur. And stones less than 3 millimeters, and sometimes even up to 5 millimeters, might not produce a shadow. And also, shadowing might not be apparent in poor quality ultrasound images with too much gain. Gain is brightness. And here in this image, you can see a kidney and a hyperechoic structure here, which appears like stone, uh, but there is no shadow. So you'll be um, left with the question whether it's a part of the fat here or it's a stone. So what do we do then? When you find something suspicious for a stone, but you are not sure, just turn on the color button on your machine and take the color box to that area and see what happens. Let me first remind you of the principle of the color Doppler. As you know, ultrasound involves transmitting the sound waves and listening back to the echoes a particular structure uh, reflects. When the object or the structure of interest is stationary, assume in this case our basis in blood vessels, the reflected frequency is pretty much same as that of transmitted frequency. And if your RBC is moving towards the probe, the reflected frequency is higher than that of the transmitted frequency. And that flow is depicted with shades of red color on the screen. 
So that means when the flow in the blood vessel is going towards the probe, that is represented as red. And when the object or the RBC is moving away from the probe, the reflected frequency is lower than that of the transmitted frequency. And that is represented in shades of blue. So when the flow in the blood vessel is moving away from the probe, it is represented in the blue color. And when the blood is flowing nice and smooth in a blood vessel like the laminar flow here, you see either red or blue shades uh, pretty much uniform and red or blue just depends upon the direction of the blood flow. And if the sampled area has turbulent flow like this with high velocities and blood moving in different directions, you see mixture of color signals uh, which resemble a twinkling star or fireworks. So now what is a twinkling artifact? Rough reflective surfaces such as stones and calcifications emit a turbulent flow on color Doppler and appear as rapidly alternating foci of red and blue color signals. It's something like the twinkling star here in different colors. And this is called the twinkling sign or twinkling artifact and helps us to identify stones in the Doppler mode. Uh, the mechanism of this artifact is incompletely understood and there are various hypotheses trying to explain this phenomena. Um, it could be that rough surfaces split the ultrasound beam into a complex beam resulting in random scattering which mimics turbulent flow. Or narrow band of intrinsic uh, noise produced by the ultrasound scanner could be the source of the artifact. It has been proposed that stabilized bubbles in the cracks of the stone um, may lead to twinkling. And an in vitro experiment using glass beads suggested that ultrasound radiation force driven micro oscillation might be giving rise to this artifact. Whatever might be the underlying mechanism, twinkling is a very useful artifact and its sensitivity and specificity for recognition of stones less than 5 millimeters, that is small stones, were found to be as high as 99% and 91% respectively in uh, one study. And this study exclusively included uh, patients with uh, small stones, less than 5 millimeters. Again, note that it doesn't mean twinkling is seen only with small stones. Even in larger stones with shadowing, twinkling is seen, and it would help you to confirm your findings in the color mode. Now let's go over some examples. In this kidney ultrasound here, you see a hyperechoic structure in the pretty much upper pole of the kidney, but there is no obvious shadowing. And uh, you're not sure if it's a uh, part of the sinus fat or it's a stone. So now see the color Doppler image and you see this nice twinkling corresponding uh, to this place of the hyperechoic structure that you saw on the grayscale imaging. And therefore it's most likely a stone or calcified structure uh, and less likely to be the uh, sinus fat. In this kidney ultrasound, you are seeing some stones uh, here, here, here with some acoustic shadowing. And I'm not sure here if you are able to see anything that much, but there is some shadow uh, if you carefully observe. And now you see the corresponding color Doppler image. Now you can nicely see there are different foci of uh, uh, these alternating colors here, the twinkling artifact. You see one stone here, one here, one here, and the other one here. Like if you notice the difference between the twinkling artifact from the previous slide to this one, these twinkles have long uh, tails along with them. Uh, those are sometimes called uh, color comet tail artifacts. And the presence of these tails depends on the machine you are using and the Doppler mode settings. And here are some more examples. This is a transverse section of the right kidney showing a nice hyperechoic structures here, one and two, with uh, shadowing. And when you turn on the color mode, now you see nice twinkling here and here with uh, tails. And here is another example of uh, kidney ultrasound where you see two stones in the lower pole of the kidney, these arrows, uh, which appear as echogenic structures or hyperechoic structures to be more precise, uh, with uh, some shadowing here. 
and when you turn on the color Doppler you see nice twinkling here and here and note that this one doesn't have tails but the twinkling is very obvious. So this is the example of stone in the distal ureter. So this is a grayscale ultrasound image of the urinary bladder and this is the anterior aspect, this is the posterior aspect and as you know ureters enter the bladder from the posterior aspect. In normal ureters you will not be able to see them on ultrasound well unless they are really distended uh, with hydronephrosis. Uh, and also you have to note that bladder is an organ that transmits the ultrasound waves very well and you will frequently have this bright area posterior to the bladder which is called the acoustic enhancement. Um, you have to adjust the machine settings so that you can reduce the brightness just in this part of the image. And it's quite possible that uh, you miss bright stones here in this part, uh, especially in the distal ureter region because the surrounding area is also bright. And in this image, you, if you carefully observe, you'll be able to see this bright stone here with a nice shadow. So this is the stone in the left distal ureter. And uh, remember, like wherever this marking is there, that's the right side of the image. And this is the left side uh, by convention in abdominal ultrasound mode. And here, when you turn on the color Doppler uh, for the same image, you see a nice twinkling artifact here in the distal ureter confirming the presence of a stone. And this is a nice example of a bladder stone. It's a big stone with a uh, horseshoe shape and uh, shadowing following it. And when you turn on the color Doppler, you see nice twinkling all around the stone. And if you don't have color Doppler, how do you know if it's a stone or a clot? You just turn the patient uh, um, in, in one of the decubitus positions and the stone will move with the patient. And this is another example of a bladder stone, but this time not as prominent as the previous one. Uh, see this uh, hyperechoic structure here. Uh, if you carefully observe, you'll see some shadowing. But again, like this stone can also be easily missed if you're not careful. Uh, because this area or the posterior aspect of the bladder is very frequently whitish because of the acoustic enhancement. And on the color Doppler mode, you see twinkling here. It's not as big as the previous bladder uh, uh, stone, but, uh, but still it's good enough that you'll be able to identify this structure as um, a bladder stone. And to finish off, uh, we'll go over some things that you might want to know about twinkling. And it's been looked at whether the intensity of uh, twinkling predicts the composition of stones, but uh, they did not find any association. And uh, appearance of twinkling artifact is dependent on the equipment used, as well as on the ultrasound parameters, such as transducer frequency, pulse repetition frequency. That means with what frequency your ultrasound probe is emitting um, ultrasound waves and grayscale gain, color right priority, and position of the focal zone. If you're not frequently doing uh, uh, vascular scans, you might not be doing uh, all these adjustments, but adjustment of focal zone is probably one of the easier things to do. So if you place the focal zone at or below the rough reflective surface, it will enhance the twinkling. So what is focal zone? It's a user control feature on the machine which gives best definition at a designated depth of focus. It is pretty much like adjusting the camera focus on your smartphone uh, by tapping on the screen. So in this image, uh, the focal zone is here. So focal zone on machines is represented with a arrow or with a hourglass sign, uh, depending on the manufacturer. And the focal zone is here and uh, something that is suspicious for stone is here. And in this image, you brought the focal zone uh, like slightly below this suspicious structure, and now you are able to see the twinkling. So that would help uh, eliciting twinkling when you are in doubt. Thank you, and uh, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. This is a dedicated handle for uh, nephrology-oriented point-of-care ultrasonography. Um, you can ask any questions or um, share nice images with me. Um, thank you.